I'm Walter D. Donnie Kennedy, Chief of Heritage Operation for the Sons of Confederate Veterans. This is part two of Commander's Comment for June of 2019, and of course, we're here with Commander Paul Gramlin, Jr., Commander-in-Chief of the Sons of Confederate Veterans. Paul, it's good to have you back with us. Hello, Donnie. It's good to be with you. All right, Commander. You know, we're under a constant, vicious neo-Marxist attack. Uh, you know, everything Confederate, everything Southern even, is, seems to be under attack by these extremists on the left. And the neo-Marxists usually use their platform, which unfortunately the media and academia, to accuse the Sons of Confederate Veterans, really, as being a white supremacist organization. Yes, How do you do. respond to that, Commander? Well, unfortunately, in the past, we have there has been white supremacist organizations that have sabotaged our symbols, right. like the flags and, and anything that has to do with the Confederacy. They have sabotaged it and using it for their own ill-gotten means and yeah. what have you, and what and, the, and their hate attacks that they have that they have shown us who they are. But you know, I have to let them know. We we try to let them know and and educate them as far as the Confederacy goes in the war and even now that there were so many cultures and and races nationalities, ethnicities mm -hmm. uh, that fought for the South uh, in the war between 1861 and 65. And it, even in our organization now, we have several uh, uh, men of color of different backgrounds, Asian, uh, Hispanic. So we so, wouldn't be a very good white supremacist organization with all this diversity. Well, you would think saying. you would think if you look at the makeup of our membership, you know, that would be an argument yeah. that just wouldn't fly. It wouldn't. But uh, as we've often noted, these people, our enemies, they don't operate on truth and facts. They'll go on emotion and right, lies. Exactly. And that's what they're throwing. And you made a comment about the misuse of our uh, Confederate flag. I think some of the biggest demonstration by the Klan and that type of organization they were seeing carrying the United States flag, the, not the Confederate flag. Very popular photograph out there of the Klan marching on Pennsylvania Avenue back in, in the mid-20s. Yeah. Every one of them has a U.S. flag. Not a Confederate flag. Not a Confederate flag in the bunch. Yeah. But they also, not only do they use the U.S. flag, but of course they use the Christian flags. They hold up the Bible. Yeah. So on that way of thinking we'd have to would have to purge society we'd have to yeah well and, 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 but that's what the ultimate goal is does that mean we had to get rid of white bed sheets too i wonder <laughs> oh, but anyway. I don't know. all right well but, well moving on you know i i think we, we all understand that good symbols can be misused yes. and you don't attack the symbol the good right. symbol you attack the misuse of right, those exactly. whether it's the united states flag or a confederate flag uh, you know, the SEV has been pointing out to everybody that this neo-Marxist attack against the Confederate flag, Confederate monuments, Confederate heroes, is really just part and parcel of an attack against traditional American values. Is that what you understand? That's what I see them doing. I, uh, last year, I spoke to the Sons of Union veterans yes. in Boston, Massachusetts. And I told them there that we both had a common enemy and that common enemy was someone who was wanting to eradicate the moral fiber and moral fabric of this country. That's their ultimate goal. Right. And that's taking out everything from yeah. uh, all the wars of our veterans in the past, you know, all the way back to the Revolutionary War. Right. They're wanting to erase everything uh, that we stand for in this country and then build it in their own image, if right, you will. Right. Yeah, it's interesting you make that comment because I remember here recently, Kate Smith, uh, her statue in, I think it was Pittsburgh, uh, uh, Pennsylvania, was taken down because some of these leftists said that somewhere in her past she'd made some comments or sang some song that they deemed to be racist. And it's very interesting. This is in the North. This has happened. Mm -hmm. Kate Smith was known for her rendition of God Bless America. It was a very popular when I was a young, young man. But Kate Smith, rather than being a racist, she's the one that broke the racial barrier when Hollywood was in favor of racism. Right. She had Josephine Baker on her show when people in Hollywood, and Josephine Baker was a black star. Uh, Josephine Baker, when she went to New York City, had to go to a 
non-white mm -hmm. hotel because mm -hmm. she was black. New York City, not exactly. Birmingham, Alabama. So Kate Smith was responsible for breaking the color barrier, but yet these people, because she's singing God Bless America, I believe is trying to take her out. And we're seeing more and more of these fanatics, right. and that's what they are, fanatics. Right. And they, they find a person or celebrity or someone from the past, and they find one sentence or one word here and there, and then they label them a racist, they got to go. So I'm, I'm kind of curious when that logic, they're going to use that logic to take out Abraham Lincoln. Well, you mean Abraham Lincoln said some unkind things about black people? <laughs> yes, he did. He felt like the, the, the black race was an inferior uh, race compared to the whites. Uh, in his famous Lincoln-Douglas debates, as you well know, in 1858, he made the statement that he will f he felt like the blacks were inferior to white and they should be kept subordinate to the white people. And uh, so now we're going to remove the Lincoln Monument, I suppose. Yeah, well. But again, you and I, we're not historical revision. We don't no. want to tear down monuments. We want to protect monuments, whether it's the monument to the Ten Commandments or to Whether the we agree problems. with them or not, they whether we agree with the person or whatever, you know, they're there for a reason. Yeah. And, and it's kind of like the, what our, our ancestors said back in 1860, just leave us alone. Leave us alone. We'll we we'll leave you alone, you leave us alone. Right. Uh, the SCV is fighting back now. I know um, when you were elected commander-in-chief, you said you were going to start what we call the Southern Victory Campaign. Mm -hmm. Can you expand on the Southern Victory Campaign? What is it about? Well, basically the Southern Victory Campaign is where the Sons of Confederate Veterans and, and like-minded uh, people like us, but mainly the Sons of Confederate Veterans, take back the narrative. You know, far too long the media, as we know it as today, uh, they pretty much, well, we understand what the media today is like. Right. They're going to put their spin on everything, whether, you know, if they don't like something then, or they're against something, they're going to put their, what they feel about a, a, a subject and situation like I said, they're going to spin it to their narrative. And for us to make any headway, we've got to get into a position where we are taking back the narrative. Right. And one of those things is not dealing with the, with the modern media, right. the national media and then a lot of local media. We, don't, we, we can't do that anymore. We've got to be where we can take control of it ourselves. And, and it's good that you mentioned that, but just like this video we're doing now, it's on our website, Make Dixie Great Again. We're trying to get our information out to John Q. Public, and I'm going to just for, I know you understand this, but for people watching, we're doing Radio Free Dixie, where we got one-minute radio ads going across the South. Internet Free Dixie, where we have our internet ads going out, pointing people to this website and for further information. So we are doing things. One of the things that we're doing is our counterattack, what I call the Confederate counterattack. Just for our viewers, uh, commanding for our viewers information, I want to go over. In February, we did the Confederate Diversity exactly. Month. Exactly. And we did had ads on radio, TV. We had videos about Confederate diversity. Uh, in April, we did Confederate Veterans or American Veterans, where we're defending all, as you said, all, all veterans all who are veterans. now under attack by the neo-Marxists. In June, we're going to be doing, of course, uh, July the 4th, America's Secession Holiday. Mm -hmm. And then in uh, October, I believe we're going to be doing uh, the real Thanksgiving, where we talk about the beginning of Thanksgiving in the South, and of course in December, Christmas in Dixie. Yeah. So what, what we're doing, well, we're and, and to tweak them, you, you mentioned July 4th, we can kind of tweak the, uh, the membership and those watching. Uh, we believe, and we've stated it so often, that our ancestors in 1861 were right because their ancestors in 1776 Absolutely. were right. Absolutely. And we, and we drive that home, if yeah. you will, to let yeah. them know that that's the same thing. Yeah, if anybody, on July the 4th, you should look at the Declaration of Independence and read it, <clears throat> and read where it says that we, the people, have the right and the obligation, it's interesting, is that the right and the obligation to overthrow, to alter or abolish any government that doesn't suit our needs mm -hmm. and establish a new government. What did our Confederate forefathers do in 17, uh, 1861? They did the same thing. Yeah. The same thing. So and also, uh, real quick shout out to all those in uh, different states. If you can get a Veterans Monument Protection Bill, 
Yeah. Uh, no, we're, we're going to revisit this in Louisiana. Uh, Georgia has yeah. strengthened theirs. Right. So these are things Alabama that we're doing. Has, yeah. Alabama as well. So these are things that we are looking to do. But remember, it's, it doesn't matter how strong the law is. It all depends on how much it's enforced. And, and a lot of that has to do with how actively involved our membership yes. and our people are in our local communities, letting the political yeah. establishment know we are here and we intend to raise ungodly hell if yeah. you allow these neo-Marxists right. to pull our monuments down or deface a World War One, World right. War Two, any, 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 any better, monument. Any our, Vietnam, our Vietnam vets have had enough dumped on. Yes. They do not need anything else, and we need to protect all of our veterans That's and right. our Confederate veterans. It's certainly yes, we do. that number. Well, Commander, we're just about at the end of our part two, and it's been enjoyable, and we look forward to seeing you next month on our next Commander's Comment. I'm Walter D. Donnie Kennedy, and it's been a pleasure to be with y'all and with Commander Paul C. Gremlin, Jr., Commander of the Sons of Confederate Veterans, Commander-in-Chief of the Sons mm -hmm. of Confederate Veterans.